Oftentimes, filmmakers sacrifice historical accuracy for exciting entertainment. However, what happens when the subject matter is exciting, like war for example? In this video essay, I will look into six historical films that focus on war and discuss the historical accuracies and inaccuracies of each. Over the course of this semester, Professor McClurkin's U.S. History and Film class has watched 12 historical films, six of which focus on a war that the United States was involved in. The six films are Last of the Mohicans, The Patriot, Gone with the Wind, Glory, The Best Years of Our Lives, and Born on the Fourth of July. In terms of historical accuracy, I have ranked these films from least accurate to most accurate, with Gone with the Wind being the least accurate and the best years of our lives being the most accurate. Each film will be examined in order to explain why they are more or less accurate than one another. Let's start with Gone with the Wind. This 1939 film was directed by Victor Fleming, and it focuses on the life in the South during the Civil War. In terms of accuracy, this film was the worst. The film was adapted from the 1936 book written by Margaret Mitchell, an author from Georgia. While watching this four-hour long film, it was hard to see how it accurately portrayed the Civil War. But one thing it did get right was the fact when the men left to fight in the war, the women had to stay and tend to the plantations as well as the household. However, it's clear to see that this film is merely Southern propaganda. The most obvious inaccuracy is the positive portrayal of slavery. The film made it seem like this system was a mutual relationship between those enslaved and the slaveholders, and completely ignores the horrific truth of slavery in the American South. Furthermore, the portrayal of William Tecumseh Sherman as a murderous monster was also inaccurate, but making him the horrible villain only adds to the notion of sympathy for the South. Going back to the Revolutionary War, let's look at how it was portrayed in Roland Emmerich's 2000 film The Patriot. Similar to Gone with the Wind, this film is a highly dramatized viewpoint of war, and it also comes across as a propaganda film, this time for the United States. On the surface, it is somewhat accurate, such as the kind of clothing, architecture, and war tactics depicted. However, that is pretty much where the accuracy ends with this film. The film villainizes the British, especially with the portrayal of Tavington. It shows African Americans arming themselves and participating in the war, which would not have happened due to the fact that African Americans were unable to bear arms in South Carolina at the time. Furthermore, there are no records of the infamous church burning scene actually happening, and the true history of the individuals that Mel Gibson's character is based on is completely ignored, such as Francis Marion being a horrific person who hunted Native Americans for pleasure. Now let's go back even further and look at the French and Indian War. Michael Mann's 1992 film, The Last of the Mohicans, based off of James Fenimore Cooper's 1826 novel, shows the war from the perspective of the fictional Nathaniel Poe. In terms of accuracy, it is somewhat more accurate than the previous two films. It does a great job in showing the British to be arrogant and not understanding the Native Americans. This relates to the film's accurate portrayal of politics between the Native Americans and the colonists. Like the Patriot, the clothing and tools shown in the film also appear to be accurate to the period. However, the film fails in accuracy by lending too much focus to the romance between two fictional characters, using the war as a backdrop to a love story. It also relies too much on fictional characters to drive the plot, like the antagonist Magua. Jumping to the Vietnam War, we get a much more accurate depiction of war in Oliver Stone's 1989 film, Born on the Fourth of July. This film is a great example in how a movie can be both accurate and entertaining. 
Stone's account accurately portrays the brutalities of war, as well as the struggles veterans went through after returning home from the Vietnam War, and more specifically, the post-traumatic stress disorders that many experience when trying to adjust to civilian life. It also portrays the contrasting opinions of the Vietnam War, the support, and the opposition. One scene that stuck out was when one of the hospital attendants who is African American states that he wouldn't fight a war for a country that doesn't respect his rights, thus portraying the African American opposition to the war. However, one scene that was not quite accurate was when Kovic spoke at the 4th of July parade, as this did not actually happen, and it gave the impression that the parade was for him. This is problematic because many Vietnam veterans did not receive this kind of praise upon returning. Going back to the American Civil War, Edward Zwick's 1989 film Glory does a much better job in depicting this war than does Gone with the Wind. This film focuses on the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, a regiment primarily composed of African American men. While accurately portraying the brutalities of war, it also accurately portrays the treatment African Americans experienced by both the North and the South, and it emphasizes the importance of the 54th Regiment. While its portrayal of the regiment is fairly accurate, it shows the regiment to be made up of runaway enslaved individuals, whereas many members were actually freed individuals. Like The Last of the Mohicans, Glory also relies heavily on fictional characters like Tripp, John Rollins, Private Sharts, and Thomas Searles. Lastly, we have William Wyler's 1946 film, The Best Years of Our Lives. This film focuses on veterans returning home after serving in World War II. Much like Born on the Fourth of July, Wyler's film accurately portrays the struggles veterans faced when trying to adjust to civilian life after the war. The portrayal of Homer, a soldier who lost his hands in the war, is especially accurate because the individual portraying him was an actual World War II veteran who lost his hands. Lastly, it portrays post-war fear in the United States, as tensions were rising between the United States and the Soviet Union as the nuclear arms race was developing. However, it only portrays this from the white soldier's perspective, and ignores the perspectives of African American, Native American, and Japanese American soldiers. What helps this film in terms of accuracy, and what separates this film from the others, is the fact that this film was actually released in the period that it focuses on, making it both a secondary and a primary source on its subject matter. While many historical films take many creative liberties and sacrifice accuracy for entertainment, this does not mean that all films do so. Films like The Best Years of Our Lives, Glory, and even Born on the Fourth of July show that a film can be both entertaining and accurate, and it helps to have an exciting topic like war. However, as we have seen with films like Gone with the Wind and The Patriot, some films take too many liberties, resulting in a very inaccurate portrayal of war. Nonetheless, it is interesting to see how different filmmakers have tackled the subject of war in their works. Thank you. I hereby declare upon my word of honor that I have neither given nor received unauthorized help on this work.